Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Pastor George Pearsons. This is my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. And we are so glad that you're with us. And we are here with Kenneth Copeland Bible College today. Welcome, everybody. Oh, man. Great. Wow. Exciting. It is. Exciting, you know? I'm, I'm going to put that on my ringtone every time it rings. <laughs> the applause. The applause, comes. yes. That's a good idea. I like that. We, that we told them uh, earlier we just wish we'd just take them on the road with us. We there we go. Just take our KCBC students everywhere we go. You know, there's something about it coming into an atmosphere. It's not just an atmosphere of faith, but a place where faith is valued. It's a place where valued. You know, you can tell where, where, where values lie. You know, you can come into some churches, I've been in some in the past, that they proclaim certain things, but it doesn't, it's not in the room, so to speak, yeah. because it's not really yeah. valued. It's not necessarily lived. It's just a, a sermon or a, a doctrine, a, a, a thesis. But what I love about KCBC, Kenneth Copeland Bible College, is you come into a place, an environment where everybody's hungry for these things. There's such a value on it, so much so that many of them have uprooted and moved here to be a part of yeah. it. Now, so how many of you have done that? You just back, look, wow. look at all the hands. And wow. was it worth it? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, so far so good, right? Yes. Right. In fact, George, it seems right. If I just jump into this, we're gonna talk about faith today. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to read this from Debbie Nettles. Debbie, give it, wave, wave, wave at us, Debbie. There she is, okay. She's a first, first year student, okay. And already she said that she had been learning about the word of faith for t over 25 years before coming here to KCBC. I thought I had a good foundation before I started school. To say learning here is like drinking from a fire hose is an understatement, more like drinking right out of the hydrant, wouldn't you say, in some ways? I feel like I've heard more truth in the last two years than I've had in 25 years before. I've learned who I am in Christ, how important a foundation is in my life, and about the covenant I have with God, how to pray, the Holy Spirit, the blessing. I have a greater understanding of the Old and New Testaments and so much more, and all of this has made me more confident and who I am in God. Praise God. You know, if your That's identity probably. is in anything else, yeah. it'll get you off track. Yeah. You know, it's okay to recognize your, your background, your family, your culture, all those are things and they're a blessing from God. But if your identity of who you are in life is rooted in that, then you're up for a disappointment, right? But if you can find out from the Word of God who you are in Christ, Oh, now we're talking about something altogether different. And everything else then is subject to what you know about who you are right. in Him. Okay? So core let's, values, Let's get review. started. Let's Here go. we go. Okay. Go for it. Core values are the values that we hold in such esteem that we got our lives by them. They are our, through which we filter everything. They're our compass. These are not things that we just picked and decided and memorized and said, oh, I'm gonna live by that. No, that doesn't make them a core value. You can start with that, but a core value is something that you have embraced, made a decision, a quality yeah. decision, and you've built it into your, into your heart. And we know that the heart, the spirit of man, is where power is. So it's in your heart, it's in your mind, it's in your mouth, it's in your actions, and you order your life by those core values, and you do it enough, it becomes just the way you are, just the way you live. Yeah. So then no matter what is going on in the world around you, how crazy, stupid, awful, ungodly it becomes, you've got something that helps you stay the course so that God can be God in your life, which is always a good thing. So in reviewing our core values, I want you to say this after me. We put the Word of God first place. We put the Word of God first place. We live by faith. We live by faith. We walk in love. We walk in love. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We are led by the Holy Spirit. We pray about everything. We pray about everything. We protect the anointing. We protect the anointing. And we honor God. And we honor God. Those are our core values. Praise God. So yesterday we talked about putting the Word of God first place. 
we talked about, yes, that's, you know, we want to do it first thing in the day because it gets our, our heart and our mind, you know, that and the other core values working with it and prayer and we've got the word working. But it's more than just an item on the to-do list. The word is preeminent. It's first place. It has final authority. We taught our kids, what does the word say? What does the word say? What does the word say? Mm -hmm. It was irritating to them at times, but nonetheless, what does the word say? And by doing that, we trained them up that way. And now they get to, to do the same thing to their kids. And they say to them, well, Justice, well, Kaylin, well, Jesse, Brooklyn, Je uh, Piper, Eileen, what does the word say? By teaching them that, then they're learning now in their lives to go to the word and find out what it says. So that is, what does the word say? That's, that's the thing that we say to each. What does the word say about this? For the word to have final authority means that we change our lives to line up with the word and not try to make the Bible fit into our lifestyle. That's what? such an important thing. Gloria has taught that over and over again. For the word to have final authority means we change our lives to line up with the word and not try to make the Bible fit our lifestyle. Amen. So now we started to talk about living by faith. This is core value number two. We live, live by faith. Four times in the Bible, it says the just shall, shall live, live by, by faith. faith. Well, it helps to understand from the word of God, first of all, that we've been justified by his righteousness, that we are righteous with his righteousness. When we accept Jesus, that's the first step knowing who you are in Christ is that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But when you understand that, then everything it says about us, then that it says the just, that's you, shall live by faith. So to answer the question, why do we need faith? Well, first of all, you can't get saved without it. Ephesians 2, 8, amplified, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace is a gift, but it is received by faith. What God has has so wonderfully given to us by his grace, we take it with our faith. And then 1 Peter 1, 9 amplified, you receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So I think you're gonna see as we go through this list, we're just gonna run through these and it's not exhaustive, but you'll see that everything, yeah. everything is by faith. Ephesians 2, 8, pastor just read it, that by grace you are saved through faith. Everything of grace comes by faith. So God's, God's willingness to give you his power to be what he wants you to be, to do what he wants you to do, to have what he wants you to have, all comes by grace, yeah. but through faith, okay? Here's another one. We can't walk the Christian walk without faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk with God by faith and not by sight. So we can't live the Christian life without it. We can't be blessed with the blessing of Abraham without it. Galatians 3, 9, those who have faith are blessed along with faithful Abraham, the man of faith. Glory to God. Another one, we're kept by God's power through faith. 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Faith makes us whole. Jesus said yeah. in Matthew 9, yeah. 20, 29, according to your faith. How many times did he say that? And even when he didn't say it, you can see it at work. According to your faith, according, be it done unto you, according to your faith. The blind receive yeah. their sight, according yeah. to their faith. And then he told the woman with the issue of blood, your faith, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. He said that also in Matthew 9, 22. Your faith has made you whole. You'll find that of, of the 19 specific accounts that are given in the New Testament about healing, the vast majority of them, it was the faith of those that came to Jesus for healing that produced their, their, the healing results that they were looking for. James There's, 5, 15 says, the prayer of faith will save or deliver the sick. So faith is at the core of our healing. Right. By faith, we have what we hope for. 
Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And 22 times, 22 times in Hebrews 11, by faith, by faith, by faith, and one times it says through faith. So by faith, we have what we have our heart set for and believing for and having that godly hope expectation for. So when you read through Hebrews 11 and you see these great heroes, that's the, that's the faith hall of fame in Hebrews 11. But you go through there and you really look at the lives of some of those guys, yikes. Mark Hankins told the Lord one time, he said, I think you need to rewrite this chapter. You know, look at all these people, the mistakes that they made. You know, you got Samson mentioned, but there was Delilah, you know, and you've just all the ones that, that made the mistakes, all of them did. But it was through faith in spite of their shortcomings. Aren't you glad that it isn't by our perfection that we're able to accomplish the will of God, that it isn't because of our perfection, but because of faith in His perfection, not by our ability, but by faith in His ability. It's a divine exchange. When we have faith in what He can do, then what He can do is made available to us. Praise the Lord. So without faith, we can't fight the good fight of faith. I was yeah, listening to Dad right. this morning, the authority of the believer, and he makes us say, what kind of, what, what fight is a good fight? Well, the one that's already been won. <laughs> The one that the, the, the winning is already guaranteed. We fight that good fight by faith. Without faith, it's an, an unending struggle to which there will either be no conclusion or you'll wind up on the, the bottom of the heap. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, what doing what? The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, yes. loins girt about with the truth, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel Amen. of peace or the gospel Amen. of wholeness. But then he says, above all, above all, taking up the shield, shield of, faith. of faith. Praise God. Above all. Why? Why above all? Because all of those other armor pieces, they go to work for you by faith. By Say faith. it like you mean it. By, by faith. faith. That's right. By faith. By faith is what, by faith in what the word tells you about those things is what puts them to work. It takes, and it says also, you're able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. You know, to wrestle with the devil without faith. That, in fact, I love what Brother Hagin said. He said, if the devil can keep you in the arena of reason, human reasoning, yeah. he will defeat you every time. But if you will hold him in the arena of faith, you will come out the winner every time. Praise, Praise God. God for that. Praise God. So all the armor of God depends on not only having faith, but knowing how to use it. We can't overcome the world without faith, of course. 1 John 5, 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. That is the victory that overcomes everything, anything that is out there. Our faith working, our faith developed. And you know, you can develop your faith. Your faith can become stronger and stronger and stronger. You watch Kenneth and Gloria and you see where they were back in 1966 and 1967. When they first began and they began with nothing. And I think about this, sometimes when I'm driving on the property, I look at this ministry and I think about what we have here at the world headquarters and all of the offices around the world. And, and faith did that, faith in the word, faith in God did that and they started with nothing, but look what God has done. And God is no respecter of persons. He will do the same for each one of us to accomplish what we have in our hearts and he has in his heart for us to do. You know, there was many years ago, uh, earlier on in the ministry, and my dad was <clears throat> complaining just a little bit to the Lord and comparing 
his ministry to someone else's, and this other person who's, uh, their confessions seemed to be terrible, always pressing people for money, and the money was just coming in. And they had a lot of miracles happening and a lot of people, thousands upon thousands and thousands of people. And, and dad wasn't against them having that, but his complaint was, why is it that he can have all of that and do what he's doing and, and I, I, that doesn't happen like that for me. It seems like we have to believe for every penny and dime and dollar in this ministry. Huh. And the Lord said, well, others may, but you may not. Why? Because I am requiring you to live this life of faith that I have called you to preach yeah. to prove that it works. Did you ever wonder why the Apostle Paul had so much trouble? Did you ever wonder why he went through all that he went through? Because he had to, to prove yeah. that this revelation, yeah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord. He had to prove it, prove it out that what he taught wasn't a foreign concept and idea, wasn't heresy, but rather it was the living Word of God. Yeah. And by living that out and proving it out and watching it, victory over victory, and the whole known world was shaken under the impact of this, this one little man going through storms and fighting robbers and lions and devils and all beaten and, and left for dead, and yet got right up and did it some more. Praise God. Signs, wonders, miracles following yeah, him. Yeah. He proved it that it worked. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to prove in our lives that this word that we're talking about works. A lot of times we have to preach it before it shows. We preach it because we believe it and it's true. You know, dad was preaching prosperity when it didn't look very prosperous. He was believing, believing God's provision you know, when, when the old car he was driving barely would make it out of town, but he's preaching it because he believed it. And his, what his testimony at the time was, wasn't what made the word true. But over time, the word proved its truth in his life so that all could see that what he was saying was true and that the word yep. works and faith in God's word works. Yep. We've certainly seen this in our lives. Over and over again. We've seen it here at the ministry. I'm just thinking right now, in 1989, the $6 million deficit that we ran into. We went on daily television, and <clears throat> we went on as many stations as possible, went on a little bit fast, and so the, the TV bill amassed, and there were other bills. And what did we do? We stood in faith. We believed God. Yes, it was, <clears throat> there was a couple of days I wanted to quit, but, you know, you get a hold of yourself and you, you get a hold of the Word of God. And <clears throat> I know that Kenneth and Gloria were praying <clears throat> all the while, being in agreement with each other and with us. But I took the staff back then and we met every day in the December of 1989. We met together. We praised God together. We used our faith, said, we are out of this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> and within, within six months, we were completely out of that deficit situation. And I just remember that is, a, that is a monumental thing that took place in this ministry and determined it'll never happen. That will never happen again in Jesus' name. You know, we talked earlier the week about raising our children, training them up in the way they should go. And we're not talking about this today, about faith and how it's released. But, but as you students know, that you, having faith is one thing, but releasing it with your words and understanding how to do that is important. So Jeremy was in the fourth grade and had a science project due. So we talked to him about it, came up with this idea that we would buy two plants. I bought two little ivy plants, and we, we set them in the, the same window, but he would take one aside and talk really good to it, and they would talk the other one aside and just, just tell it ugly things. You're awful, you're ugly, you don't have... You know, you, you're dying, and but it went and he'd just talk all sweet to it. Yeah. So he's writing down everything he's logging it, counting the leaves on each one, and so forth, and he's not seeing any change, no change whatsoever. So he came to me and he said, Mom, it's not working. Ooh. I said, 
Yes, Jeremy, it is. No, it's not. Hmm. Yes, it is. Faith is working. No, it's not. You know, Jeremy, in faith, you have what you say. It's working. No, it's not. Yes, Jeremy, it is. It's, oh. (laughs) He got it. So he went back and started using his faith towards those plants. Well, sure enough, one of them started having leaves turn yellow and dwindling up, and he documented all that put it together, short, long story short, took it in for his science project and he got a big blue ribbon on this science project. It was so cool. He was very pleased with that and his little ivy plants and so forth. And we have pictures of him on the big display board of him talking, you know, Copeland eyes talking to the one of them, and <laughs> talking to the other one. So he brings them home and we have both of those plants at home. And I, I've never been all that interested in house plants so much, and so I set them aside, and I probably watered them a, a few times and forgot about them. Well, I later, sometime later, back in the corner, we had a little sink area in the um, living room, you know, a little, uh, little bar area with a little sink, and, and I noticed a long time, months and months, months later, maybe, maybe even a year or more, there was, well, the plant was still in the corner. And I went over there and it did not look happy, but it was alive. And it had not had any daylight, no water, wow. nothing wow. for months and months. And it was still alive, still alive. That worked. The other one was long gone. I'd toss that one away. What It worked. Faith worked. Faith worked. The word worked. And how do we build our faith? We go to the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'll tell you, do you have a testimony that you're going to Oh, well, I, well, we read one early at the beginning. Let's yes. see. Well, who, does somebody right here on the front row is Freak TV out? Let's play that game. Freak TV out game. Uh, Ogo, did you want to say something? Did we, did we have a, Spencer, did we get a, did y'all give me a microphone? Uh-oh. Okay, I'll just come down here. Follow me, TV camera, follow me, follow me. They're following real quick. You just wanted to say, oh gosh, you've got 30 seconds. Yeah, so walking in love, for sure. This KCBC has just changed my life in that reality, knowing that faith is grounded on love as well. And so being rooted in his love, which inspires me to have faith. Praise God, amen, amen. So how many, your faith has grown since you've been here at KCBC? Great, all right, there you go. All right, well. We have something to offer you coming up at this break, and we want you to take advantage of it. Go to kcm.org slash core, and we have our giveaway product for you there, and we'll give you more information with the announcer right now. Don't miss it. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a faith community here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry. Discover new gifts and talents and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. There is so much more to being a believer than just going to heaven. What if you could live a life of intention, fulfill your God-given destiny, and see God's kingdom established here on earth? You can with Our Core Values, a book by Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Learn the seven core values that become the blueprint for the abundant life Jesus has for you. Your core beliefs are like a compass that guide every decision you make and create the culture of your life. That's why, as a ministry, KCM bases everything on these specific Bible-based core values. In fact, they're for every believer to live a life of victory. When you're rooted in values such as living by faith and walking in love, you aren't rocked by the chaos of the world. As you study the Bible, use this book and the special journal pages to take you deeper. Put God's Word first place and be a light in the darkness. Become a part of changing the culture around you through Our Core Values. Request your copy of Our Core Values, the free book by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, 
also available as a digital download. Go to kcm.org core or call 800-600-7395. You can also scan the QR code. Core values are the values that guide your life and help you stay the course and hold steady in the storms of life. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. The most important thing you can do in your life, in your entire life, is to make this one major decision, and that is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. I did it, Pastor Terry did it, everybody in this room here at KCBC, Kenneth Copa Ministries, we've all accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, and today is your opportunity to do that. And how do you do it? Well, by faith. Out of your heart, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that He took your place on that awful rugged cross, and He took your place in punishment for sin in the very pit of hell. But oh, thank God, God raised Him from the dead. Praise God. Seated thank Him you, and exalted Him at the right hand of the authority of all the universe. Amen. And then He invited you to join Him in that seat That's simply right. by having faith in what God did to raise him That's right. from the dead. And then Jesus said, he said, I will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues, and all of it is by faith. Right. You, you know, I just, I sense right now that there's some people who feel totally empty. And I heard, I heard somebody say this one time, there's a God shape on the inside of every one of us that's being waited to be waited to be filled. And so Jesus is wants, to, wants to fill you right now with his life. So say this after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe I, receive I believe I receive Jesus, Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. Take my life. Take my life. And do something with it. And do something with it. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. And I will speak in another tongue. And I will speak with other tongues. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we have something Amen. we want to give you at the this uh, the salvation package. Yep. This he did it all for you. And some brochures as well. Yes, a lot that'll of help them. That we want to give you to bless you, to help you. So the information, of course, is there on your screen and to start learning how to study your Bible. Praise the Lord. Well, we're gonna be back tomorrow. We're looking forward to it. Until then, remember this. God, God loves, loves you, you. We, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you received Jesus into your heart and made Him the Lord and Savior of your life, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to welcome you to the family of God. They have a gift for you called the Salvation Package to help you understand more about your new life in Christ. Receive your free package on kcm.org salvation.